Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We are back in my shop. Welcome, it's a friendly place. In behind the camera is Mitch. Mitch is always behind the camera. It's never anybody else. We're doing a session on the, on the Tiger Cub today. That's our episode. And this is the seat mold. We're gonna talk about this a little bit. Last time you saw this, I think it was on the bike and it had some Bondo over it and it was kind of the shape. I looked at it and right here, this used to be a, a gentle curve and it didn't really match the frame. So what I did was I took some aluminum, I put a little bend in there, I shaped it and I use Bondo as the glue on both sides. Can you see? So it comes down now about one quarter of an inch more here. It, it suits the frame much better. I like it better. After I had the shape, I used Bondo and I smoothed it out more. And then when I liked the shape, I put on a skim coat, very thin coat, and I switched to a finer sandpaper. I think it was a 120 paper, something like that. So now I had the shape, a little bit rough. So I, I took it, uh, actually I sprayed it outside in the sunshine, something that I don't normally do, but it was a beautiful spring day. This is the high fill primer. You mix it like, like four parts of paint, one part of activator. And you can spray it on fairly heavy. And I did about maybe three coats and it set up nicely. It didn't, in the sun, it set up really nicely. That was good. Then I, I sand that with 320 paper. And what I do to sand it is, I get my, here it is. I got a foam pad because this has some contours. If you just hold the paper in your hand, it follows whatever contours are there. So you have to have the paper on something and this has a little bit of strength. It's not perfectly solid. So that's how you get a nice smoothness there. After that, I took some old Imron that I have and I mean, this is from the 90s and it still works great. I sprayed it, it green. I let that set up overnight. I had a little oven. Heat really helps it to cure faster. And then I sanded the paint. I learned a lot years ago, and I'm gonna show you a little slideshow now. Because if you ask the question, what can possibly go wrong? Well, if you, don't, if you don't do it properly, a lot can go wrong. So we're gonna segue now to a little slideshow and I'll show you one of my worst mistakes doing fiberglass. Years ago, this was about 1995, I had this motorcycle that was called the Vincent. You might have seen the video. And these were the plugs for the fender molds. So this is the shape of the actual fender. The mold gets made over top of that. You pull out the plug and then you have the mold. So right after this, I I mean, it was looking good, and I thought, oh, I, I'm just going to sand it one more time. Now, I've been using a lot of, of coarse sandpaper, 80 grit, 100 grit, 40 grit. So I looked in my box of what I had, and I had some wet and dry paper, and it was a 280 grit. And I thought, oh, that's pretty smooth. So I sanded it with a 280 grit. I used water, I did it nice and lightly, and then I waxed it many times. So these are the, the molds and the, and the plugs you just saw. They are mounted on the plywood there. I could not get the molds off the plugs because what had happened is I should never have used a 280 grit. It was way too coarse. I was inexperienced. I was enthusiastic. I tried for half a day to separate the molds from the plugs. And you can see here, not successful at all. So what I did was I had to knock out all of, all of the plugs and there was Bondo, there was metal. You can see I'm using, these are all the tools I'm using. 
I got my a two pound hammer. I got big screwdrivers. I got a, there's a, a crowbar in there as well. There's my grinder. You can see the mess that's coming out of that. So finally, I did a bunch of, of chipping very carefully because I, I don't want to hurt the mold much at all. And then finally, I was left with the paint. I tried to take off the paint with lacquer thinner and this and that, and it was, it was hard even to do that. So you can see here, this is the, this is the plug on, on the front fender. You can see how much of the mold actually I didn't want to let go. That whole area there was completely molded into the mold. So five days later, working from morning till night, I was back to where I was, and that's what the molds look like. So if you don't do the prep properly, you can have a lot of problems. So we'll go back and look at, look at this here. I know now that when you paint and then you have to polish, because at, at that time, I never knew how to polish paint. That was, that was something outside my expertise. So what I did on here, after I spray painted on the green, I used a thousand grit, there it is, 1000 grit wet and dry. You can also use 1500 grit or 2000. Now, I had a paint rep show me this. He came around and we, I had something I had painted and he demonstrated to me what to do. And I said, really? Like a thousand grit? Like how, how's that gonna do anything? And so what you do is to, you cut it in half like that. You have, have some warm water with some soap, soap in it. I use dish soap. And then you wrap, wrap the paper around the foam and you start sanding and you do little circles, you can do it long. And if you take a, a paper towel and you wipe it, you get to see, like even after you paint it, it's shiny, it looks really smooth, but when you do this, it shows all the imperfections and it really does make it smooth. So that was a real learning experience for me, knowing that I need to use a really, really fine wet and dry paper. And then after that, after you use the paper, it looks kind of smoky because it's not, it's very smooth, but it's not shiny. That's when you need to use a polisher so this is what I bought. This is a, a polishing wheel. It's foam. At, at first I tried a softer one. This, this one has a little bit of hardness to it. And you keep a plastic bag over this because if you just leave it out, all the dust from the air will settle in there. Then when you polish, it'll scratch because of the dust. So, and then you use some kind of a polish. This is, this is what works for me and you polish it and it makes it very, very smooth. It, it's a beautiful thing. And then after you polish it, you have to wax it. It's, it's Carnuba wax. I got this from George years ago. And so you always wear a glove when you're doing this because it's supposed to be not good for your hands. So you wax it. So this has wax on it now. And on the instructions, you wax it, you leave it for a couple hours because the solvents have to flash off. You can't just put wax on and then five, 10 minutes later, polish it off because the solvents haven't come out of the wax yet. And something else I was taught to do that when you're waxing, you always write down, you have a little piece of paper, you write down when you wax it because Otherwise, you know, you go have lunch, you can't remember how many times you wax it. So you need to wax it a minimum of five times. It's important. And when you wax it, you always do overlapping circles because if you miss a spot and you're always waxing the same way, if, if there's a one part that isn't waxed, you have a really hard time separating the mold from the, from the part. So see what happens here? 
So, so now you can see how smooth this is. So our mission today is to make the actual part. I have some carbon fiber. I have some resin. Can you see how smooth that is? There's, there's basically no, no hint of orange peel or anything. It's just smooth. So that's what is going to help the part to separate from the mold. This is the mold. So this has been waxed five times now. And a couple hours minimum between each of the coats. I got a table over here I'm going to set up. I'm going to bring out my fiberglass supplies. I have some carbon fiber cloth. So it's not real carbon fiber in a way because real carbon fiber you use autoclave, vacuum bagging and all that. This is just, it is carbon fiber, but it's getting laid up like fiberglass. That's what I can do here in my shop. So that there, go. it's just large enough. Up at the front here, I can't make the carbon fiber mold to that. That's asking it, it, it too much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a small piece that comes up here, overlaps like that, and then this'll go like so. See how it, it wants to spring back? Once it gets saturated with the resin, it becomes more compliant. So that'll, that'll work like that. Anything that's on the surface now is going to show up on the, the carbon. I got the catalyst all measured out, approximately. Give it a little mix with a stir. It's all separating there, you see that? It's coming off the wax. But I want to get some down anyway. See, this isn't going to want to bend right away. I knew that would happen. So we'll just work with it like that. So this has to start to bend now. So it'll take a little while for this to soak in. But it will. Okay, see how that holds down now? Can you see that? Remember at first it wanted to pop up, but now, now that the resin has impregnated it somewhat, so I want to bring that round the side. See what I'm doing? I'm, over, I'm overlapping this. I want it to overlap. Okay, so that's the first stage. I think that's pretty good. So as this goes on, as the layer of mat goes on, 
it forms easier than the carbon, so it should help to help to keep the carbon flat against the mold. See this big air pocket here? You have to work it to pull it down. Just if you pull very, very lightly. There we go. This is what gets the air bubbles out. I did fiberglass for quite a while before I heard about a roller. Nobody told me. I didn't know to ask. And if you don't have a roller, you'll probably get air bubbles if you only use a brush, no matter how much you use the brush. And there's different shapes of rollers you can get, different sizes, all depending on the job you're doing. Can you see the air bubbles there? If I do a good job, they'll be gone. Because what'll happen is, if I don't get the air bubbles out, and then when I pop the part off the mold, you see every air bubble. Everything is right there, so. You really do want to use a roller. And you use it in, in, in different directions, not just one direction, but different directions. And then you can use acetone. I always thought you couldn't do that, but you can. Because if you don't use acetone, if you don't put the roller into acetone, as the fiberglass, it starts to get a little bit sticky then you end up with a mess on the roller and then you can't roll as well. So you just put it into acetone and just keep on rolling. It's fine. I cut some strips. What I want to do is to add a reinforcement around the edge to make it a little bit stronger. So we'll start at the front here. Anyway, no one's going to see this really when it's on the bike, when the bike's all assembled, so. But I know. I'm just fussy, fussy frame builder. In our next video, what I plan to do is to, is to take the seat base off the mold. I'll show you how I do that. We'll trim it. We'll sand it and then I want to make out of the wire welding rod, I want to make the actual shape of the seat. It's going to have a little, a little hump at the back, just a little one. And then I can, as I go around to the upholsterer, he knows exactly what I want. So I think that's a good plan. Thanks for hanging out in the shop here. We appreciate it. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, you know, thumbs up too and subscribe. See you next time. Take care. With my gloves on. Is this the childproof thing?
something was childproof last time, I remember that. <laughs>